Welcome, everyone. Welcome back. I can see some folks just trickling in here. So we're just going to wait for a couple more seconds before we get started. Okay, well, happy Tuesday, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Today is week seven. So next uh, Tuesday will be our final class. I've uh, just put in the chat box here for you all our Superwalk website. So just a reminder, our Superwalk is coming uh, on the weekend of September the 11th. And I've also put in our contact email address in the chat box as well, just in case anyone wants to contact us. Uh, I can see a comment here, no picture. Oh, okay, so you can't see me. Can you hear me? Uh, it, sometimes your Zoom screen might be in a collapsed icon at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you click on that, there should be a little picture that comes up and then there's like a diagonal a line. If you click on that, it should expand, hopefully. If not, you can also try logging in, uh, logging out and then back in again. Okay, I think we have a couple of new folks today. Um, yeah, absolutely. If you need to leave early, not a problem at all. You're welcome to join the class for as long as you're able to. Um, okay. So I, I know that we have a couple of new folks joining us for the first time today. Now, if you are new, we are starting the class in sitting and then we move to a standing position relatively quickly, uh, just so most of the class is in standing because it is a balance and falls class. So we do need to simulate real world environments or situations where you might be needing your balance. So um, as you can imagine, uh, that's the reason that the entire class or majority of the class is in standing. If at any point during our standing exercises, um, you feel like you need some support in terms of your balance, you're welcome to stand by a wall and hold on to the wall, uh, or you can use a table, a chair, something around you that you can hold on to to keep yourself safe. That's absolutely fine. And if you are new today, uh, bear in mind that a lot of these exercises that we're doing have been built on from week one onwards. So if they do feel a little bit challenging, don't worry. Try your best to keep up with it. Um, do as much as you feel you're able to. And you can always review the recording from previous sections um, and, uh, and, and work your way up as well. So the class is meant to get harder as the weeks go on. So don't feel bad if you feel like the class is pretty challenging for you. I can see here that there's someone who has raised their hand. I don't know if that was a um, mistake or not, but I will click on the talk button. So uh, all it says here is the name is admin. So I'm not sure who that is, but I've uh, allowed you to speak. If you would like to, you're welcome to unmute yourself if you are the one who raised your hand. Um, okay. So our recordings from our previous weeks have been put up onto our YouTube channel. So if you did want to revisit any of our classes from before, you're welcome to do so. Um, if you're not sure where to find our YouTube channel, you can either go straight onto YouTube, the website, and you can uh, type in Parkinson Society BC all in one word, or you're welcome to email us and I can always send that to you as well. Um, okay, so I think the person who um, put their hand up, it might have been a mistake because I don't see anybody coming up to chat yet, but that's okay. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the session today, you're welcome to type in the chat box and uh, I will do my best to answer those questions. Of course, during the class, I'll be moving with you, so I won't be able to see the questions per se, but I will come up to the screen um, every now and then just so I can double check if there are any questions. Okay, I think that's it. Um, oh, okay, yeah, perfect. You got your uh, camera sorted out there, Carl. That's great, so you can see me now. Okay, great, well, let's get started. I'm gonna move back to my chair. 
Okay, so before we begin today, I just want you to check in with yourself in sitting, making sure that we're not leaning back into our chair like this, because if we're leaning back, it'll be very difficult for us to move. So I want you to check in with yourself and just see if you can shuffle to the front of your chair such that you're sitting right on the edge there. So you have some room behind your knees and you also have room to move your hips. So we're not sitting all the way back where our legs can't really move. And sitting at the front of the chair, we're gonna start by marching on the spot and swinging those arms. And as we're doing the marching here, so this is just a warm up. I don't want you to uh, you know, go all out, but I just want you to start by marching. And as we're doing the marching here, you'll notice that my head, the height of my head stays the same. So I'm not getting lower like this as I march, but I'm sitting up nice and tall and I'm staying relatively the same height. And as I swing my arms, you'll notice that my arms are not just going forward, but they're also going backward. So you don't wanna just be doing this, <laughs> but we wanna swing the arms back as well. Opposite arm to leg as we're marching. Good, nice and tall. See if you can lift those knees a little bit higher. So same marching pattern. We're just going to exaggerate the movements a little bit more. Swing your arms a little bit more and lift those knees up a little bit higher. I think I see something pop up in the chat box. I will have a look at that after our warm up. Okay, now we're going to kick one of our legs out and we're gonna rotate our body towards the straightening leg. So you're keeping yourself nice and tall. You're straightening your knee, showing me the bottom of your foot. And while you're doing that, you're twisting, rotating your body towards the straightened leg and your arms are out in a T shape as you're doing that. And really let your head follow this movement of your trunk. So it's like you're looking to the side of the room. Check in with your posture. Are you still sitting up nice and tall? You wanna stay the same height, almost as if you're balancing a plate on your head and you don't want the plate to drop. Good, let's do four more here. Four, three, two, one, and we're gonna go back to our marching. This time we're gonna drop the arms down beside us as we're marching. And we're going to circle one of your arms backwards, one arm, one arm backwards as we're marching. And now you're gonna take your other arm and you're gonna circle it the other way. So this arm here is going backwards. So my other arm is gonna go forward. So you're circling the arms in opposite directions here, in opposite directions of the circle. One is going backwards, one is going forwards. And you can do this nice and slow if you like, because this gets a little bit confusing. But you want to try to get the hands to reach down at the same time and reach up overhead at the same time. So even though your arms are traveling in opposite directions, they always reach the top together and they reach the bottom together. Check in with yourself. How's your posture? Are we still sitting up nice and tall? Are we still marching or are we just doing the arms now? <laughs> Good. Keep those arms going. Arms going in opposite directions. And rest the arms. Keep the legs going. This time, we're going to take our other arm and go backwards. So same thing, but we're now changing directions. So other arm is going backwards. We're circling back. And as we circle back, the other arm is going to circle forward. So you're circling the arms in opposite directions again, except we've re reversed the arms now. So same thing here, keeping your spine nice and tall. You're still marching on the spot while you're circling the arms in opposite directions. And your hands reach the bottom together and they reach the top together, even though they're circling in opposite directions. Nicely done. Check in with your posture. Are we still nice and tall? Are we still marching? Good, nicely done. A few more. 
One more. And rest. We're going to tap our heel forward and push the opposite arm forward at the same time. Noticing here that my hand and fingers are spread nice and wide. So really imagine you're pushing something away from you as we reach the heel forward. So opposite arm to the leg. Still sitting up nice and tall, I hope. Nice light tap with the heels. Pushing something forward. Good. Add both arms. Exactly the same movement. We're just adding both arms to this push motion. Tapping with the heels as you're pushing the arms forward, sitting up nice and tall. Nicely done. If I'm going too fast, feel free to slow it down. Good, and drop the arms. Now your leg is gonna tap out to the side and you're gonna reach the arm, opposite arm out to the side as well. So we're going opposite arm to leg, pushing out to the side. You're tapping those toes out to the side as you're pushing the opposite arm out to the side, like so. Notice here my hand and fingers are spread nice and wide again, and I'm sitting up nice and tall. I'm trying not to slouch down like this, but I wanna keep my chest open. Nicely done. Now we're gonna add both arms. Same movement, adding both of the arms. Check in with yourself. Are you still sitting up nice and tall? Good, nicely done. Last 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and drop the arms, sitting up nice and tall, float those arms out to the side, feet flat onto the floor. We're going to use our body to tip over to the side, such that we're curving our body over in a sort of a crescent shape. Keep your chest facing forward. You should feel a stretch on the outside of your body. Now, stay there. Really important thing, as you're doing that stretch, we're not just doing this with the arms, right? We're not just twisting the arms out to the side, but we're actually moving our body. So you'll see here, my arms are actually staying in the same position, but the reason they're tipping is because my body is tipping. But can you see my arms and head are still in that same orientation? It's my body that's tipping over. Same thing on the other side. So you're tipping your body over. So think about that shoulder going to that hip. It's not just the arms moving, but it's your body. So if you took away your arms, your body should still look like it's on an angle. Good. Coming back up, drop the arms. Take your hand, reach to the outside of the opposite knee. Then your other hand grabs around the back of the chair, sitting up nice and tall. Use your arms and twist your body around such that you're looking at the back wall. Now, as you're in this twist, you want to try to keep yourself as tall as possible. So you don't want to be getting lower in your seat. You want to actually be thinking about your body as if it was a corkscrew. So you're still reaching the crown of your head to the ceiling. You're just twisting around on the spot. Good. Coming back to the middle. Same thing. Other side. Take your hand. Reach to the outside of the knee. Then the other hand grabs around the back of the chair. Sitting tall and twist. Making sure we're still sitting up nice and tall, crown of the head reaching for the ceiling. And come back around. This time we're gonna sit all the way back in our chair. I'm gonna turn to the side so you can see. I want you to sit all the way back in your chair, lean back into the chair, hands up beside your head, open those elbows, and then you're going to lean back over the chair. So you should feel a nice back stretch here. Just be careful. I don't want your chair to tip, okay? So make sure your chair is sturdy. If it's not, don't lean back too far, okay? Just a little bit. So if your upper back 
leaning over the back of the chair and coming back to the middle. Let's do that one more time. Opening the elbows out to the side, lean back into the chair or an over the chair such that you can feel a stretch in your back. Hold it for three, two, one, and coming back up. Shuffle forward in your chair again, all the way to the front. We're now going to practice our sit to stand. So <clears throat> you have different options here, three different options. If you're joining us for the first time, see what works for you, but usually we start with two legs. So I'll show you that version first. You're sitting at the front of your chair, and we're gonna do sit to stands as slow as we can. So you're gonna lean your chest forward, almost like someone grabbed you by the shirt and it's pulling you forward. You wanna be looking right in front of your feet and you wanna transfer that weight forward even further over your feet such that your bottom is off the chair, but your weight is over your feet. And you're gonna push the floor away from you as hard as you can, squeeze your butt cheeks in to stand up. And you're gonna do the same thing sitting down. Stick your bottom back chest forward, but you're still keeping your weight over your base of support at all times and sit down. So what we don't want to happen, we don't want to be sitting back and then pushing the back of our knees against the chair to stand up. And we also don't want to be doing this and pulling ourselves up. But you want to practice transferring your weight using your legs to help you stand up. So you're transferring your weight over your base of support to help you stand each time. Nice and slow. That's option one. Option two, you can have one leg a little bit further forward. Imagine eggshells under the foot. You can lift up the toes if that helps. And then you're using, you're biasing your back legs. So you're doing the same movement pattern, leaning your weight forward over the base of support and then pushing as hard as you can into that base of support, sticking the bottom muscles in to stand up nice and tall. My body is over that back leg so that if I wanted to lift the front leg, I can and I won't fall. Same when you sit back down, stick your bottom back, chest forward over that supporting leg, and then you sit back down. Okay, option three, if you feel really brave, you're gonna take the leg off the floor entirely. So it doesn't have to be forward. You can actually have it just off the floor like this, and you're doing the same thing. You're leaning your chest forward over that single leg, and then you're pushing the floor away from you as hard as you can to stand up. And then same thing, sitting back down. Okay, so choose your level, whatever level you want, either two feet, one foot biased, one foot back, one foot forward, or single leg completely. It's entirely up to you. If you are doing the single leg one or the single leg biased version, I want you to stick to one side for now. Don't switch sides just yet. Stick to one side for now, up to you, what version you wanna do. Stick to one side for now so you, can, so you can get used to that movement pattern and get good at it before we switch sides. The slower you go, the better. Don't want to see any crash landing. Don't want to see anybody using momentum, right, to swing up. You want to try to use your muscles as much as you can. As slow as you can. Try to be as quiet as you can in the landing so you don't crash into the chair. Good, keep it going. Same leg still. Let's do two more and then we can switch sides for people who are doing the single leg bias or the single leg stand. For people who are doing two legs, you're just gonna continue on. Really think about moving, shifting your center of gravity over your base of support as you're doing this. So if your base of support is too far back behind your feet, you're never going to stand. So you want to bring it forward enough so it's over your feet. Switch sides. If you're doing the single leg bias or the single leg stand, I want you to switch sides as slow as you can. Keep going. I'm just going to read the comment up here. Oh, it was just Neil saying hello. Hi, Neil. <laughs> Keep going, everyone.
So remember to go fl as slow as you can. And you're really thinking about bringing your weight over your feet. Don't be afraid to bend at the hips. So bend at the hips to stand up. And then when you sit back down, same thing. Bend at the hips, chest forward. As long as you're keeping your weight over your feet. Let's do two more here in your own time. Two more on that same leg. Or if you're doing the double leg version, two more in your own time. And then on the last one, you're going to stay standing. Okay. So I just put my chair away for a moment. We're going to practice our squat sequence. So our feet are going to be hip width apart. We're going to do a squat. Your hands are together, palms together like so to keep your chest up. Stand up. Then one of your legs is going to go back into a skater squat or a skater lunge. So your leg is going to go back on a diagonal into a skater lunge and then back up. Let me turn sideways for a second. Now, when you're doing your squat, I don't want to see this. A lot of people lean back and they bend their knees like that. I want you to think about sticking your bottom back and then bending your knees. So imagine you're sitting down in a chair. So you're really thinking about sticking your bottom back rather than keeping the bottom forward like this, okay? So stick your bottom back, chest up. And then when you do your skater squats, you're reaching your leg back on a diagonal and then you're reaching those arms out. Try to keep the shoulders as squared as you can to the front. So we're not, we're not doing this. We're keeping our shoulders as squared to the front as we can. And we're gonna bend both of our knees, keep your chest up almost like you're about to lunge onto the floor, kneel on the floor, keep your chest up like an elevator, only up and down, not forward and backwards. Then we stand back up, same thing, other side squat, other leg going back and lunge. Okay, let me move forward. Squat and lunge. So you're thinking about that diagonal skater lunge. And you can feel free to do this slower if you like. It doesn't have to be a super quick movement. I just want you to get those legs nice and warm. Try to keep those chest bones upwards so you don't want to be leaning forward. Keep your chest up as you're squatting if you can. Same with when you're doing the skater diagonal lunge. You want to try to keep your chest up as well. How are we doing? Make sure you stand all the way back up each time so you don't want to stay crouched. You're going to stand all the way back up after your squat. Nicely done. Stand all the way back up. That's it. Let's do one more each side. Stand all the way back up into our skater. Keep your shoulders squared to the front. One more. Squat. And skater. And relax. Okay. We're going to grab our chair again. We're going to do our hip strengthening drills. I know we all hate this. Sorry. <laughs> so... Holding onto your chair or table or a, or a wall, whatever you've got at home, I definitely want you to hold on for this one. What you're going to do here is you're going to lean forward a little bit. Okay, so we're not going all the way forward. We're just leaning forward a little bit so we can give our hips a bit of room. And you're going to take one of your legs, bring it back behind you, keep that knee straight. You'll notice that my knee and toes are facing forward. When I say forward, I mean whatever object I'm holding on to. I'm turning sideways so you can see me, but... If I was forward, my knee and hips facing forward, and I'm not, I'm not rotating out to the side. Okay, keeping that knee straight, your chest is a little bit further forward. You're going to keep everything in your body completely still except for the leg. The leg is going to lift up and down, but never touch the floor. Can you see my toes are hovering off the floor? They're not on the floor. They're hovering. So I'm lifting, hovering, lifting, hovering. And you'll notice here, when I'm doing this movement, I'm using this muscle and this muscle. And I'm not, I'm not moving my back like this, right? So I don't want my back to move. 
I want just the thigh to be lifting up and down, keeping those knees completely straight. We're not twisting out to the side, keeping those knees and toes facing forward to the object that you're holding onto. Keep the back straight, just that leg. And we're not swinging it forward, right? We're not doing this. We're not going like this. We're keeping the leg back behind us and we're just lifting and hovering off the floor. So we're pulsing, it's not coming forward. Good, how we did? <laughs> Let's do 10 more. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Lean your chest forward a little bit, other leg behind you, knee straight, same thing, lift and hover. Still thinking about your chest not moving, so you can see my body is not moving other than this leg. And I'm keeping my knee and toes facing forward as in whatever object I'm holding onto. And I'm trying not to open my hips. So I'm keeping my hips squared. Remember that leg is not swinging forward, not swinging. No swinging forward. We're lifting up and hover, no swinging forward. Keep that knee straight. Last 10, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest. I'm gonna turn to face you. Now, standing up nice and tall, we're gonna switch legs. We're gonna bring the leg out to the side this time. So my knees and my toes are pointing forward. So I'm not doing this, but I'm pointing everything forward. Keeping your body straight, you're going to lift the leg and hover. Lift and hover. Exactly the same thing. So I'm not, I'm not. I'm not doing this, right? I'm not leaning to the side. I'm keeping my chest completely still. Imagine you're balancing something on your shoulders and you're just lifting the leg and it's not touching the floor. We're not swinging. We're not doing this. So we're lifting and hover, lift and hover. And it doesn't have to be very high. Just go as far as you feel you're able to. Keep the knee straight, knee facing forward. Good. Let's do last 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Same thing on the other side, take the leg, bring it out to the side, knees and toes facing forward, chest upright, and then we're going to lift and hover. So remember, we're not swinging, no swinging. We're gonna lift and hover. So don't let it touch the floor, lift, and hover, keep your body upright, your chest nice and still, shoulders still, not pitching to the side, just the leg moving. Stand up nice and tall, keep your bottom muscles tucked in. Good, don't let it touch the floor, keep it up. Good, chest forward, don't rotate it either, keep it facing forward. Good. Last 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Okay, I'm gonna face on a diagonal so you can see. Now we're gonna put those two movements together, the lifting behind you and lifting to the side. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna bring one leg behind us, so make sure you switch legs. We're going to bring the leg behind us, keep it completely straight. So we're not bending the knees, we're not doing this. We're keeping the knee straight. We're gonna lift it up and then bring it around to the side and put it down. Lift it up, bring it around to the back and put it down. So essentially, I'm going behind to beside me. So those two movements put together. Then I'm gonna lift up to go behind me. So you're drawing an upside down U. Okay, so we're not doing this. We are thinking a U shape up and over. So we're going behind. We're going lift up and over to the side. Lift up and over to behind. Maybe let me face you can see that more. So lifting up and over to the side of you. And then lift up and over to behind you. You can lean your chest forward a little bit to help. Good. So you should feel that burning in the side of your hip muscles. Doesn't have to be too high off the ground as well. You just need to lift it enough so it can go up and over to each position. This might feel a little bit tough. 
Nice job. Let's do two more here. One more. And relax, shake out the legs. Let's try the other side. Same thing here. You're thinking about the upside down U shape. You're bringing the leg behind you. Keep your hips squared, lifting up and over to land beside you. Then same thing again, up and over to behind you. Up and over to beside you. Nicely done. You can lean your chest forward a little bit if you like to give your hips some more room. It doesn't have to be really high off the floor, okay? I don't want you to hike your leg all the way up, but I just want you to lift it enough that you can draw the upside down U shape, the up and over feeling. Nicely done. How are we doing? Let's do two more here. And one more. And rest, okay. We're gonna put the chair away again. We're gonna do some lateral movement. From here, we're going to march on the spot. You're going to bring your arms out to the side and you're going to tap opposite hand to knee like so. Now, as we're doing this movement, you wanna keep the knees facing, uh, or sorry, the knees lifted up nice and high. So what I don't wanna see is this. So we don't wanna be doing this. We want to lift the knees up nice and high to meet the hand. And you can see here, my head, if you can see where my head is, it's, it's staying relatively still and it's staying at the same height. So I'm not, I'm not getting shorter each time, but I'm staying the same height. So imagine you got that plate balancing on your head. Now, keeping this marching pattern and the hand to knee movement going, you're going to now take this and travel sideways. So same movement, we're just getting some lateral movement here. Traveling sideways across the room, still lifting the knees nice and high to meet the hand. And the top of my head is still reaching up to the ceiling. Nicely done. Good, make sure your, your chest is facing forward. We're squaring our body forward. We're not turning to the side like this, right? We're keeping our body forward and we're doing this lateral movement. Let's try some forward and backwards movement. So you're gonna take this movement forward towards your screen and then backwards away from the screen again. So keeping our head up and our shoulders squared, lifting those knees nice and high, still reaching the opposite hand to knee as we're doing this movement. Good. Good, and rest. Okay, legs together. I want you to imagine I've glued your thighs and your feet together. If you can't bring them together, bring them as close together as you can, even if there's a little bit of a gap. But if you can, bring your legs all the way in together. We're going to curl down into a small ball over our legs like so. And then from here, we're gonna take our legs and we're gonna step out as far as we can and reach the arms as far as we can, like so. And then that same leg that stepped out is going to step all the way back in Lifting nice and high, come back into the, the ball shape in the middle. And then we're going to do it to the other side as well. You're lifting the legs, stepping out to the side, almost like you're stepping over something. Reaching those arms as wide as you can. And then same leg, lifting as high as you can and bring it back in. Hopefully you've, you've already joined me here. So if you have not started, join me here. This lateral movement again, curling into a ball and then stepping out as far as you can, being as big as you can here. Now you can either stay here, or if you wanna take this up a notch, I want you to start turning this movement. So you'll see here, I'm only doing it to one side. If I'm turning, only one of my legs is moving. One, one leg here is staying right in the middle, bolted to the floor, and I'm kind of pivoting. 
on that leg. Can you see? I'm pivoting on this leg. And my other leg is one moving, right? And then once you make your circle all the way around, you're going to do the same thing to the other side. So only one leg is moving and the other is staying bolted into the floor. So you're pivoting on one leg, essentially. You're still curling into that small ball, then stepping out to the side, and then same thing on the other side. So you don't have to turn this if you don't want to. By all means, you're welcome to stay in that stationary position, or if you want, you can turn. And you'll notice that as I'm turning, I'm turning forwards. And you, of course, don't have to do it as fast as what I'm doing now. You can go slower if you like, as long as you're really making that movement nice and exaggerated. How are we doing? Okay, keep going. I'm just going to check the chat box. No, all good. No questions. Okay. Keep it going. You can either stay on the spot or you're welcome to turn if you like. Making sure we're still coming back into that small ball each time and then stepping out as far as we can, opening the hands, opening the palm, stepping the leg out as far as you can, really lifting that knee up as high as we can. So we're not scuffing our shoes along the floor when we're stepping out and in, but we're really making that step out as distinctive as possible. Not just the step out, but the step back in as well. So I don't want to see this back in, but we want to lift that leg and bring it back in. If you're doing the turning, make sure you're switching directions after each turn. Otherwise, we'll get too dizzy. <laughs> How are you doing? Hopefully, you're following along OK. Let's do one more. I'm going to do one more circle to the other side. So remember, you don't need to do the turning version. If you want to do the stationary version, absolutely fine. And rest. Okay. We're going to do another movement in standing before we go down to the floor. So uh, let me turn on the diagonal so you can see. What we're going to do here is we're going to take one of our legs and we're going to go into a backwards lunge. So it looks like this. I'm stepping back as far as I can, bending both knees, almost like a, I'm about to kneel on the floor, but not quite. My body's upright. I'm not going forward and backwards, but I'm going up and down like an elevator. And that back leg, that same back leg is going to push myself back to the middle and I'm going to lift that knee as high as I can. Can you see that? I'm going to do it again. Same leg. Stepping back, lunge. That same leg is going to push my weight back forward and lift the knee. So I'm transferring my weight. So here, my weight's in the middle. I'm choosing to bring my weight back behind me that I'm choosing to push my weight back forward and then behind me again, okay? So as you're doing this, you're reaching the opposite arm, two legs, so opposite arm, two legs, not just the front arm, but the back arm as well. Then when you stand up, you're gonna clap your hands up overhead and lift that knee. Then the same thing again. So we're doing one side for now. So I'm facing a diagonal, so that way you can see this. Now, if you can't lunge back that far, that's okay. Just step back as far as you can and bend those knees. Try to keep the chest upright like so, okay? So if you can't lunge, stepping is fine as well. Good, nicely done. So remember, you don't have to go as fast as me. By all means, you can slow it down if you like. How are we doing? I'm just gonna check the chat box, keep going. No, nope, all good, no questions. Good, nicely done. Try to think about your chest like an elevator. You're going down and up, not forwards and backwards. Let's do five more on this side. 
Remember, you have to step back far enough so that you actually have room to bend those knees. Good, and let's switch sides. I'm gonna turn this way. So same thing, your other leg is gonna step back into that lunge, making sure your back arm is also up. So we're reaching opposite arm to leg. Then we're gonna take that same leg and reach it up towards the ceiling like so with the knee, copping the hands over the top, and then back down again. Remember, if you can't lunge, stepping is fine as long as we're trying to bend the knees. Keeping that chest up. How are we doing? <laughs> Quiet chat box is a good thing. I guess you're all concentrating. <laughs> Remember to reach opposite arm to leg during this lunge, including the back arm, not just the front arm, but the back arm as well. Make sure you stand all the way up. So remember, thinking about that weight shift, you're lunging back, choosing to weight shift backwards, but you're pushing the weight forward over your feet again. Nice and controlled. Let's do five more. Good, in your own time. Got one more here. And rest when you are done with your five. Okay. I'm gonna move my chair up this way so you can see. Now, we are going to do our floor kneel exercise. So here's what it's gonna look like. You have a couple of different options. Option one, you can step back as far as you can with one leg then you're gonna do the same thing kneeling. So trying to think about bring that back knee towards the floor. If you can reach it to the floor, reach it to the floor. If you can't, just go as low as you feel you're able to. And then from there, pushing back up to stand. Same with the other side. Stepping back as far as you can, bringing that back knee down to the floor. If you can't, just go as far as you can. And then pushing back up to stand. That's option one. If you've got that down pretty well and you wanna move on to the next option, you can do two knees. So it looks like this, stepping back, kneel down, and then the second knee comes down. Then the first leg is gonna come up again. Then the second leg come up and then we start again. Go down, down, up, up. Now, if your knees are a little bit sore, you can take a pillow and put it behind you, not in front, behind you, like this. And then that way, no matter what version you're doing, you're aiming to step back behind the pillow, that's how far you should step, bend that knee down to the floor, and stand back up, or you can do the double knee, step back behind the pillow, kneel down, then the second knee kneels down, then you come back up, and up like that, okay? So the reason we wanna step back far enough is because if you look at my knees for a second, if I only step back this far and I try to kneel to the floor, I get stuck right here. It's very difficult. My knees are completely stuck and you can see my heels are already lifting off the floor, so very hard to balance. But if you step back as far as you can, such that the back heel doesn't even reach the ground and then you bend your knees a lot easier, okay? so either single knee or double knee. Now, option to make it even more advanced, when you're down on both knees, I want you to place your hands down if you can. Let me move my chair. And then from here, keeping your back still, you're going to reach the opposite arm and leg off the floor, and then the other side, opposite arm and leg off the floor, then you're gonna stand back up. Okay, so if you need to hold on to a chair, maybe don't do that version, but if you feel you can do this, either the single knee, the single knee, or the double knee without holding on to anything, then you can try the bird dog exercise we just did. Hands down, opposite hand to leg, opposite hand to leg. Or if this is too difficult, you can just do a leg, a leg, or just do an arm, an arm, 
and then come back up. So hopefully you've already started and you're joining me here. If not, choose your level. Either hold on or you don't need to if you don't want to. And you can either do your single knee reaching to the floor or your double knee reaching to the floor. It's entirely up to you. So remember, if that version is too difficult, by all means, please hold on. Either the double knee, or if that's too hard, the single knee. You don't need to reach that knee to the floor. If you can't, just go as far as you feel you're able to, okay? And you're keeping your chest up like an elevator. And you're really controlling the landing so we don't crash onto our knees. So choose your level. I'm gonna keep doing the full version in case anyone is doing that and you get a little bit lost about the movement. Feel free to do this nice and slow as well. It's not a race. I want you to control the landing. How are we doing? I don't think there's any questions in the chat box that I can see. Hopefully you're still with me. No one's falling asleep yet. Good, nicely done everybody. Remember if you are doing the single knee version where one knee is going down to the floor and then you come back up, Make sure you're stepping that leg back as far as you can and you're reaching that knee towards the floor as much as you can. I think a lot of the times when we do these knee kneeling movements, people always get stuck because it's hard for you to step back very far or people are a bit scared to step back too far. Whoops, I've done one more here. Um, and. And so it's really important that when you are holding on and you are doing this movement, you're trying to step back as far as you can, almost like you're about to do the splits. Because you can see here my back heel is already lifting off the floor, but when I go down, so much easier than if I were to do it this way, where I'm barely stepping back and I'm just getting stuck and I have to hang on to my chair to really step back. So the further back you step, the easier that knee to the floor movement is going to be. But of course, if you can't bring your knee down, that's okay. Don't go down all the way, just a little bit, as far as you feel you're able to, getting that knee as close to the floor as you can. Or of course, you can do the double knee, or you can do it without holding on the single knee, single knee, or double knee, or the most advanced version, double knee, hands down onto the floor, doing our bird dog, opposite arm and leg reach, and then standing back up. Let's do two more in your own time, wherever you are, whichever level you're doing, do two more in your own time. Thinking about your chest, staying upright like an elevator. And rest, okay, I'm gonna move my chair. Now, we're gonna go into something a little bit different, our last exercise today. Our legs are gonna be nice and wide. We're gonna clasp our hands together, like so. So I'm clasping my hands together, keeping the arms nice and straight. I'm going to reach my hands down, or my fists down, to the outside of one of my ankles. See here, outside of the ankle. From here, you're going to stand up and you're gonna pull on a diagonal like so. So see how I'm drawing. So if you look at my arms here, I'm drawing a diagonal. Can you see that? I'm drawing diagonal, except the emphasis will be on the up, nice and quick on the way up, if you can, nice and sharp. Have a few different options here. Number one, keep your feet bolted to the floor. See how my feet don't move? Option two, as you pull up, you're gonna take the leg that you're reaching to and you're gonna lift it off the floor such that only the toes stay on the ground. So I'm really reaching myself over. Or option three, lift that leg off the floor completely. 
So the purpose here is as you pull up, you're trying to get your weight over to this leg. Because if we're, if we're pulling up and we're leaning this way, there's no way we can balance there. We got to bring our weight over that supporting leg. So the most important thing, bring your weight over your base of support, no matter what you're doing. So here, bring your weight over the base of support such that you can then lift that leg if you wanted to. Okay? going to do 10 on each side here choose your level either keep the foot on the floor lift the foot off the floor and only have the toes on the floor or lift the foot off completely so 10 in your own time on one side and then we'll switch to the other side make sure you're drawing a diagonal whoops and we're not just going straight up and down but you want it to actually be a diagonal Really check in with your posture and make sure that you're actually bringing your weight over that base of support as much as you can. So you're doing 10 on each side, whatever level you want to do. And then when you've done 10, you're going to go to the other side, but take your time. Do your own speed, so either have both feet on the floor, have the foot semi-lifted off the floor, so only the toes are still on the floor, or have the leg fully lifting off the floor. Think about that diagonal pulse. You're still pulling up on a diagonal, and you're thinking about the sharpness of the movement, so we're not going super slow motion so you're trying to pull up in a sharp motion pushing the feet into the floor i've lost count but i will do five more on this side <laughs> so make sure you're doing 10 on each side at whatever speed works for you whatever level works for you And rest when you are done. Step those legs out nice and wide. Take your hands, reach to one of the knees, stick your bottom back, keep the knees straight. So like this, you're bending one of your knees, sticking your bottom back, the leg that's straight, you should feel the stretch in the inner thigh. And then coming back up, same thing to the other side, bending over. To one side, stick your bottom back. You should feel a stretch on the inner thigh of the straight leg. Good. You're going to go towards a wall or chair. You're going to step back as far as you can. Bend the front knee, straighten the back knee such that you feel a stretch in the back calf. You're reaching that heel to the floor. If you don't feel it, step back a little bit further. Reach that back heel to the floor. Keep that back knee straight. And we come back up. Same thing, other side. Step back as far as you can. Bend the front knee, straighten the back knee. And you should feel a stretch in the back calf, reaching that heel down to the floor. Good, coming back up. This time, one leg forward, and you're gonna bend into the back knee, so the back knee is bent, the front knee is straight, hinge forward at the hips, and you should feel the stretch at the back of that straightened knee, so like this, like this. <laughs> Trying to find the different angles where you can see it. Keep that spine nice and long, think about your breastbone going down towards the knee. And then coming back up, let's do the same thing, other side, straighten the knee, bend the back knee, and then reaching your breastbone towards that uh, straightened knee. Okay, coming back up. We're gonna hold on to a wall. Now, two different options for your thigh stretch. If you're really flexible, 
you can grab hold of the ankle, pull it back towards you, towards the bottom. And you should feel a stretch at the front of the thigh. If that's too difficult, place your leg onto a chair or a stool behind you. Stick those knees together. Push the hips forward and you feel it in the front thigh. Good. Let's switch sides. Same thing, other side. Either grab hold of the foot and pull it towards your bottom or place the leg onto a chair behind you. Bring those knees together, push the hips forward and you should feel the stretch in the front of your thigh. Good. Come have a sit down again. I'm gonna do a bottom stretch. You're gonna take one of your legs, lift it up, hike it over your opposite knee if you can. And then you're gonna take the knee and push it down towards the floor as much as you can, sit up straight. If you wanna further stretch, lean your chest forward over the leg while trying to push that knee down and you should feel it in the bottom muscle here. Or if it's too difficult to do that, have that leg slightly straighter, the bottom leg slightly straighter. Then you hike the other leg up and then just push the knee down. That's okay as well, up to you, whatever works for you. If you keep your spine straight, but hinge at the hips, you'll feel it a little bit more. And then let's do the same thing on the other side. Take your leg, hike it over the other knee, push that knee down towards the floor. So the leg that's hiking over the opposite knee, push that knee down to the floor. Sit up nice and straight, hinge forward at the hips. If you can't, you should feel a stretch in the bottom muscle. Or if that's too difficult, straighten the bottom knee and then hike the leg over and push the knee down to the floor. You should feel that there. Good, and rest. Okay, good, that's it. You're done, week seven, done. I hope you all enjoyed the class. I know some of the uh, exercises were pretty challenging. So remember, if you feel like you were a little bit lost in the class, please don't be discouraged. Please keep trying. You can have a look at our um, uh, recorded videos from our previous sessions and you can build up to it. So um, because we only have eight weeks, the progression is relatively speedy. So it, it's it's pretty normal for you to feel like it's a, it's a little bit hard to catch up. But if you keep trying, keep looking at the previous videos, keep practicing, it will get better, okay? Because remember, with things like balance, essentially, to work on your balance, you've got to practice lots of weight shifting um, type exercises where you're moving your center of gravity over your base of support and have your base of support be able to support that center of gravity. And that's what balance is, right? Because in previous weeks, we talked about you know, a lot of people think balance is practicing standing on one leg. And even though you're practicing standing on one leg, it might make you better at standing on one leg. It won't actually help you with your balance, right? Because how often do we live life standing on one leg? Not really, right? Unless maybe you're an acrobat or someone like that. But a lot of the times when we're thinking about balance activities in our daily lives and things where we feel off balance is usually when we're shifting weight or changing directions or doing things we're moving our body outside of our base of support right so those are the types of things you want to be practicing where you're practicing moving your center of gravity outside of your base of support even things like just stepping in multiple directions will really help as well if you're someone who's really struggling with some of these activities okay <laughs> Nice one, Vicky. <laughs> okay, well, thank you everybody for joining us. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed the class. It's supposed to be challenging, so please don't feel discouraged. I hope I didn't put anybody off exercise. Please keep trying. It does get better if you practice more. The videos from uh, last week uh, and the weeks before are already up on YouTube. So if you're not sure where to find it, please send me an email and I will send the playlist over to you. And I'm going to type email here again in the chat box just in case anybody needs it so info at parkingsin.bc.ca thank you everybody i will see you next week for our final class have a good rest of the week bye